today we are going to deal with the differences between the monocot and the dicot seeds see this is very very important topic and as you know very well that in anatomy we study the differences between the dicot and the monocot stem the dicot and the monocot root the dicot and the monocot leaf exactly in the similar way you must also know that what is the difference between the monocot seed and the dicot seed so see the first difference that the monocot seeds are generally endospermic the monocot seeds are generally endospermic means they are albuminous means at maturity the seeds may have endosperm means during the development of the embryo the endosperm is not fully utilized and it is still found in the seed and hence the seeds are endospermic say for there are many examples maize wheat rice coconut barley all these are the monocot seeds and at maturity they are endospermic fine but there are exceptions in orchids it is very very important uh, one or two exams in one or two exam it was asked that name a monocot seed which is non endospermic so i have said that the generally the monocot seeds are endospermic but in orchids particularly in the orchids exceptionally the seeds are non endospermic fine now if you uh, just notice the dicot seed the seeds are non endospermic means at the maturity at the maturity the seeds are not having the endosperm and that's why they are called as a non endospermic or we can say it as ex albumina seeds or we can say it as non albumina seeds now the question arises why they are non endospermic because during the embryonic development the endosperm is fully utilized the endosperm is fully utilized and that's why the mature seeds are not having the endosperm and that's why they are called as the non endospermic seeds or ex albuminous seeds say for uh, example are the gram bean pea groundnut all these are the examples of the dicot seeds fine but there is exception again here also there is exception that particularly in the case of the castor in the case of the castor seeds and in the case of the sunflower seeds the seeds are endospermic the seeds are endospermic so i can say that in dicot seeds there are two exceptions one is the castor and another is known as the sunflower where the seeds are endospermic instead of non endospermic fine now the second point is very important as we know very well that monocot is called as monocot because it is having the single cotyledon so here only single cotyledon is present with embryo so the embryo is having only single cotyledon and that's why the monocot seeds are called as the monocot seeds mono means what single and cot means what cotyledon so a single cotyledon is present with embryo but as we know very well the dicot seeds are called as dicot why di means two and cot word is coming from cotyledon so two cotyledons are present with embryo so such seeds which are having two cotyledons with embryo are called as the dicot seeds and the seeds which are having the single cotyledon with embryo are called as the monocot seeds is it clear second point is clear now the third point is cotyledon is also called as scutellum now in the case of the monocot seed we always say that the uh, the cotyledon is popularly called as scutellum it is shield like it is shield shaped fine so cotyledon is called as scutellum but here no particular name is given to cotyledons means whenever we study a dicot seed we never say that the cotyledons are given a particular name but in the case of the monocot seeds the single cotyledon which is shield shape is given a particular name and that particular name is called as scutellum fine now the fourth one is now here the single cotyledon found is thin and papery means it is membranous okay what i want to say papery means what membranous so in the case of the in the case of the monocot seeds the cotyledon is the cotyledon is thin and it is papery that is it is membranous but if we see the dicot seed the cotyledons store food the cotyledons store food and hence the cotyledons are thick and fleshy so the point of difference right between the monocot seed and dicot seed is also that here the cotyledons are thin and papery here the cotyledons are thick and fleshy why because here they store food now fifth one embryo is placed at one corner of seed if you see 
a diagram of any monocot seed in any book you will be able to see that embryo is not placed at the center the embryo is present at one corner of the seed right you can see in your ncrts also okay that embryo is placed at one corner of the seed but here the embryo is placed at the center exactly it is present at the center so here based on the position we can say that in a monocot seed the embryo is present or it is placed at one corner while here in the case of the dicot seed embryo is placed at the center now in seed now this is very very important point six point in the case of the monocot seeds we know very well plumule and radical are found so the plumule is covered by a sheet called as coleoptile and the radical is covered by a sheet called as coleoraxa again i am repeating in the case of the seeds in the case of the monocot seeds the plumule is covered by a sheet called as a coleoptile and the radical is covered by a sheet called as a coleoraxa it is the characteristic feature of the monocot seed but remember that coleoptile and coleoraxa are not not at all found in the dicot seeds it is the feature of the monocot seed only now seventh one radical degenerates means radical degenerates soon and after some time what happens radical degenerates after some time and adventitious roots are formed at that place means either there are two condition either the radical degenerates after some time and adventitious roots are formed at that place or we can say that radical forms first the primary root but primary root is not long lasting and primary root is replaced by the adventitious roots i want to say that here adventitious roots are formed at the place of the uh, radical and here the radical is responsible to form the primary root again i am repeating here the radical soon degenerates right after some time only and adventitious roots are formed at that particular place and that's why we say that monocot seeds are having the adventitious roots but here the radical is responsible to form the primary root here the radical is responsible to form the primary root okay now eighth point endosperm is surrounded by a one cell thick layer endosperm is surrounded by a one cell thick layer called as the aluron layer now the monocot seeds are having a characteristic layer made up of the protein which nourishes the embryo and that is known as the aluron layer again i am repeating the in the monocot seeds the endosperm is surrounded by a one cell thick layer which is a protein layer called as the aluron layer and which nourishes the embryo but such type of the aluron layer or the protein layer or the layer surrounding the endosperm is not at all found in the dicot seeds means i can say that in monocot seeds a protein layer is found known as the aluron aluron layer which is nourishing the embryo while here the aluron layer is absent now this ninth point is very important have you ever heard about a caryopsis fruit if you have heard about a caryopsis fruit is a fruit in which the seed coat fuses with the fruit wall and this happens in the case of the uh, monocots only so here the seed coat and fruit wall are fused together there are many monocot seeds there are many monocot seeds not all but maximum monocot seeds in maximum monocot seeds there is fusion of seed coat and fruit wall means you cannot differentiate between the seed and the fruit right you cannot differentiate it why because the seed coat and the fruit wall are fused together say for if i talk about an example of wheat and maize if i put in front of you a maize grain or a or a wheat grain and if i say the differentiate between the seed and the fruit you will be not able to differentiate it why because in the monocot seeds the seed coat and the fruit wall are fused together but such type of the seeds are not found here in dicot seeds there is no fusion of the seed coat and the fruit wall seed coat and fruit wall are totally separate is it clear so in today's video we have differentiated between the monocot seeds and the dicot seeds okay in the next upcoming days we'll be uploading many new videos so keep watching thanks a lot